It is March 15th, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. OpenAI released GPT-4 yesterday, and I stand here in awe of its littiness. It's by far the most savage generative text model I've ever spoken to. I'm literally shaking right now because I'm afraid I just became obsolete, but more on that later. It's the successor to the ChatGPT 3.5 model that powers ChatGPT, but has a few new features that change everything. Here are seven things you need to know right now. First, GPT-4 stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, with the four representing the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's currently available to try out today if you're a ChatGPT Pro member, but API access is behind a waitlist. Big clients are already using it in production, like Microsoft Bing Chat, Duolingo for language learning, and at big banks to help them not collapse. The second thing to know is that GPT-4 is smarter, which is described in detail in this paper. Like it passed the bar exam in the top 10%, unlike GPT-3, which was in the bottom 10%. That's great news for humanity, because it's thinking like Shakespeare, let's kill all the lawyers. And not just that, but it's also a seen AP exams, which is good enough to get you college credit. When it comes to programming questions on leak code, it's able to solve the easy ones, but still fails for the most part on the medium and hard questions. It's basically where chess engines were at in the early 90s. Good chess players could still beat the engines back then, but 10 years later, they didn't have a chance. Third, GPT-4 can now handle 25,000 input words, compared to about 3,000 for GPT-3. This is huge, because it means you can feed the AI more context relative to the task at hand. This is the feature that's going to make me homeless, because now you can take the documentation for any library that you want to learn, then prompt the AI for a step-by-step -step guide, and it creates the perfect tutorial. In a matter of months, if not days, we'll start seeing documentation pages with context-aware built-in tutorial generators. They'll always be up to date, even though GPT-4's training cutoff was in 2021. For example, I asked it for a tutorial about angular signals, which is a new feature just announced recently. Understandably, its initial response was not correct. However, I went to the README for angular signals, copied it, and pasted it into my prompt. Its response was a near-perfect tutorial. They took our job! It did hallucinate an NPM package called Signals, but errors like that will become more rare as developers tailor their documentation for these AI prompters. What's crazy, though, is that it can do the opposite job as well. In this example, I wrote five different functions and asked it to document them for me. It did a pretty good job, which means humans don't even really need to write docs anymore. You could also use it to analyze your code, like if you have a smart contract and want to find security vulnerabilities, or it can translate code from one language to another, like a digital Rosetta Stone. In fact, the website Rosetta Code might be just as obsolete as me now. And just wait a few months until GPT-4 is integrated into GitHub Copilot. It'll be capable of handling far more context to make predictions that align with your specific dependencies or possibly do project-wide AI debugging. If you're not careful, the Copilot may become the captain. But that's not all. The fourth thing you need to know is that it's a multimodal model that can also accept images as an input. Like this dude sketched out a website on a piece of toilet paper, then seconds later it created a shitty website. Go on from hand-drawn, beautiful art to working website. You'll be able to take your Figma designs, then generate a web application for them in your favorite framework. Actually, screw Figma, you might as well just prompt Midjourney for your designs directly. Also, with images, homework is completely obsolete now. GPT-3 was already writing B-grade term papers, but now kids can just take a screenshot of their math problems and get a solution in seconds. However, GPT-4 does have some drawbacks. It's noticeably slower than other models, so if the response time is important, you'll likely want to use a different model. In addition, it'll likely be expensive, especially if you're providing a ton of tokens as content text, because currently in the API, you're billed per token, where a token roughly equals one word. The sixth thing you should know is that it's based, or at least diet woke. People have speculated that OpenAI is coding a political agenda into the AI because it refused to write poems about Trump, but would do so about Biden. GPT-4, though, didn't hesitate to spit these bars for Trump. However, it is 82% more likely to deny a disallowed prompt, which is not good news for our old friend, do anything now, Dan. Which is sad, because the vast majority of ChatGPT users are only there to trick it into doing bad things. And as a developer, the final thing you should know is that you can now pass it a system message to change its behavior. If you have access to the API, you can use this feature to give your chatbot its own custom persona or context to solve a specific problem. The earth is like a pancake, flat as can be, not round like a ball, believe you me. I have a whole video about the API on my second channel if you want to learn more. I keep telling myself I'm done making videos about AI, but every other day some crazy new thing comes out. The world is changing before our eyes, for better or worse. I just want to say that it's been an 
an honor and a privilege learning how to code with you here on YouTube, but the writing is on the wall. The role of the programming teacher is now obsolete. I'm just a dial-up internet connection in a world filled with 5G towers. Becoming an elite programmer is no longer just about how well you can Google stuff. Now it's about how well you can prompt the AI. And that's why you should buy my AI prompting masterclass, which will be available for an absurd price as soon as GPT-4 is finished writing it. This has been The Code Report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Maybe.